friendships with missionaries and with non-members and members alike that I know were meant for me to be here. And that's what I love about this, this mission, that it's personal. Each one of us has a chance to convert a soul, to bring a lost friend back. years now and we have uh, had a lot of experiences and it's been a great experience in our life uh, other than raising seven children uh, this has been the highlight of our life uh, to have this experience to uh, meet with uh, you young people these great missionaries and to serve the Lord and to represent the church here in the Anaheim Mission. Being on a mission, I learned that I was able to learn much more of myself and who I am and to be able to grow. And I think that's one of the important things on serving a mission is that you get to see yourself grow and you know who you really are. Well, I like serving in Anaheim, California Mission because it reminds me of back home because I'm from Florida and the weather's all nice and hot. There's a lot of different cultures of people and you just feel like you've been everywhere. The experiences I've had since I've been on a mission, um, I must say are pretty unique. California is probably one of the most unique places in the country. Uh, very different from home, I can say that, in all honesty. Uh, people talk a little different, act a little different. Everyone's in quite a bit of speed. What I love about a mission is um, it's all we worry about. We don't have to worry about money, girlfriends, boyfriends, jobs. We just worry about doing good all day long. And uh, that's what I love about my mission. I love about the mission. Summer's crippling heat. Change remains the constant scene. Who can elude it? Who will escape the steam?
while the skeptic steps inside. Take your chances and let it bite. Or satisfy your lagging and store some more besides before the river beds run dry. Not bad as far as knocking on earth back. We got one guy that said come back at 1.30, so I thought I didn't get his name. Illumination through the thorny maze. But they were heading back to Pharaoh, the separation shame. We come up to this lady, we're like, we're representing the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She's like, well, thank you, but you're all wrong. Whoa! She like to talk about it. She's like, I don't feel like discussing it right now with you all here, dressed up in your nice suits and your mommies and daddies telling you what's been right your whole life. Oh, God, I love missionary work. Very difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> yes. Because my English stuff is so... It's okay. I don't know, she believed in Jesus, she was a very, very firm Christian, but I don't know, whenever we tried to talk about like uh, the plan of salvation as far as our purpose on earth, and I think we had a good talk with her. I think it was a great learning opportunity about how much I need to learn about Spanish. <laughs> This is my brand new companion, Elder Olibor from Mongolia. Give me a kiss. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be working in Santa Ana together. He's going to be able to speak some good Spanish to him, because I can't. So we'll work good together. Good companionship. I was companions with Elder Johnston, Ian Johnston, in the Spanish program. And one of the things that he taught me was um, not to be not to be timid to commit anybody. Um, just go out, be bold, and and commit. Mm -hmm. um, he also taught me that that the Indianapolis Colts are the best NFL football team in in the world. My first area when I first came, my first companion, I learned from him how what power track is, and we do a lot of power tracks. My second companion, I learned from him how to be humble. And my third companion, I learned from him how to be motivated in the work. All of them are hardworking missionaries, but each have their own methods of doing the missionary work that I learned from them. One thing I learned is how to fix cars. I also learned how to fix bikes. I learned how to teach the gospel. But the most important thing is I learned how to apply the gospel in my own life and share that with other people. The, I think the way that I've grown to be most humble on my mission is working with a companion. Living with someone 24 hours a day, seven days a week isn't easy for anyone. And you just got to learn what to let go and that things really don't matter. The big things that would bother me before my mission just don't matter as much because you have to get along with that person. I've learned from my companions. Uh, probably learned the most from my trainer, Elder Hawes. He taught me how to be a missionary, what all I was supposed to do, and most of all, how to act in front of members, how to track. He taught me everything. He taught me how to study hard. He taught me it all. Definitely patience. Uh, I didn't have a lot of patience before my mission, and I think companions have really taught me a lot of patience and a lot of, a lot of love. I love this kid. We work really hard together. We have a lot of fun. Our Spanish isn't the greatest, but we're learning a lot. And he's taught me to work really hard and to ride my bike very fast to every appointment. And he's also taught me to be honest in every situation and just to tell it like it is and be straight. And I love this guy because he wants to be here and we want to baptize. Baptize. Hey, I just got my bike. Got my companion, I'm ready to go do some serious proselyting. Go teach the, the Lord's good word to the people of Anaheim, California, baby. Open every window, open every door Let the light wash over me, cover me And dance across these floors Chase away the shadows, hidden in the corners of the room and No doubting and no darkness when the light is shining through Shine on me
that little hill on the side of the town Go on up and climb it and turn back around Catch your breath at miles and miles of fields And you'd feel safe there And there alone you kneel and you feel indeed You wanna go and help every soul that you see You wanna go and share what you know inside Show you love them out beyond this home so dear. There's a I remember days when we laughed so hard We walked along the roads in the country so far I remember children at sounds in the streets And we belonged there And then a broken man in his house one day He said he wasn't sure if he knew how to pray Then he tried and said what's in his heart So pure We've been asked what it's like to be a mission president, and uh, uh, one definition I heard, it's uh, like someone trying to keep 150 ping pong balls under the water all at the same time. <laughs> it's a very uh, challenging and interesting experience. When I get home, I want to sit down and just kind of put myself together and just do something that's very quiet and easy and peaceful and easy to do from what I've been doing for the last year, last two years. I think maybe what I'll do is try to get a job training wild lions or something <laughs> like that that would be quiet and peaceful <laughs> that I can handle. <laughs> Before my mission, all my friends came up to me and told me that they didn't want me to change. They said, Elder Hill, don't change. And they kind of saddened me because that was the thing that I wanted the most. I knew that there were so many things about me that I wanted to change and get better. And the mission has given me an opportunity to do that. In my first area, I really thought that I was humble. I thought I was a humble person ready to go out and serve the Lord. But little did I know how prideful I was. I've never felt so spiritually high except for on my mission. Literally. But the hardest thing for me personally has just been trying to live the way I should and kind of not being the person I was before I came out and trying to better myself, progress myself through 
through studies in the morning and just becoming a better person than I was at home. When I started to pray like Joseph Smith and understand more, study the scriptures harder, just do my best to the best of my abilities, that's when I saw results. The results started coming in and I started to me and my companion, Elder Hawks, and started to baptize. We had just got done tracting and we had met this guy that was just really mean, just not the kindest guy in the whole world. But um, So we're like, okay, we got to go meet a member that will really um, lift our spirit. So we, we looked at our area book and found, a, and found a guide us down the street. And so we're there and I'm just so excited that we're in a place where they want to talk to us and they're so happy and the cutest little kids that I've ever seen. And um, so then we say, let's have a prayer before we leave. And so we get down and we, we have a prayer. And then the dad stands up and says, here, take my $20. He's like, you guys go get something to eat. Well, I was crying when he gave it to me, but when I got into the car, I just, I couldn't uh, hold it in. I was so grateful to be a missionary and to uh, have that support. Even with people that have nothing, they want you to have stuff because they support us so much and they love us missionaries. The Dev culture is awesome. I'm totally enjoying people like Branch. Um, we've learned so, I've learned so much, not only with the Deaf, but with the gospel and learning the science for it. I love the people. They are so amazing. They're so spiritual. They're they are closer to God than I can even imagine. The deaf people, they love everybody. They let everyone join in with them. And it's amazing that God, he um, has the way that everyone can hear the message of Jesus Christ. If they're hearing or if they're deaf or whatever language it is. Working around the Spanish people, because I get the get to eat a lot, but I don't know, they're just so sweet, they're so nice, and they're so humble, and I learned a lot from them. I learned that, I just learned to count my blessings. Spanish people are so humble. Um, well, that's one of the first things I noticed here in the mission, that as soon as I got here, the Spanish people, they're willing to give anything and everything that they have. I lived with the family, and, and any time we were sick or any time anything happened, they're always there to help us out. Um, it's really easy to love them because they're so caring and they just take you into their lives and um, even though they don't have a lot in substance and material form, they're still, they have a lot of spirit and a lot of heart and they have a lot of love for people, even people they don't really know that well. Este, este libro te explica que Jesucristo es el salvador de todo el mundo y, y que, que es bien importante por nuestra salvación. You can go almost anywhere in Santa Ana and meet Mexican people. Um, and the times that you get a knock into white people, it's fun because you get your, you, you know, you get the opportunity to have your, the door slammed in your face. I know you missed the Vietnamese program a lot. Um, people. They're really awesome people. Like, they're willing to listen to you. They might not believe what you say, but they listen to you. And they, they have a desire to find out. I feel like as far as teaching them the gospel of Jesus Christ, that it's the same. It's the same as teaching somebody who, who has, has a belief in Jesus Christ. They just don't know as much. One of the hardest things that I've gone through is on on the mission is probably dealing with rejection. As we go out and we teach these people, and we, you know, all of them don't say yes, 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 yes. And a lot of them say no. They have a word for for the church um, in Korean. It's Edun, and that means heresy. And so like, knock on the door sometimes. They'll, be like, oh, you guys are from, from Edon Church, right? And so they kind of expect you almost to, to say yes. And you're like, yeah, we are, you know. Come on and tell you about our heretic church. But Every once in a while you'll meet somebody and you can see they're, they're really sincere. 
and they, they really want to learn about the Lord. And to be able to teach them that, to be able to let them know that I, I left my home to come here, I can see a difference in their life from that. other than the temple, which uh, the Spirit is so strong at a baptism. Um, I kind of look uh, back uh, on my mission, and the most memorable times I've had on my mission uh, have definitely been baptisms. Seeing one of God's children, seeing someone who at one time didn't have the whole truth, uh, entering a covenant with God.
I know that God lives. He's our Father in heaven, and He loves us very much. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that each of us can return to His presence if we've done the things He's asked us to do. And that's the message we share to our brothers and sisters here. Dios vive, y que Él nos ama mucho, y Jesús es a Cristo. Él murió para cada uno de nosotros. Sé que el libro mormón es la palabra de Dios, y me ayuda muchísimo en mi vida. Y sé que esta es la obra más maravillosa I know that Jesus Christ loves me. I know he's my redeemer. I know that he lives and he has given me the chance that we have to return back and live with our families forever. I know that I know that what we do as missionaries here is so powerful. Um, I know that this work is nothing like is nothing like any anything else in the world. Um, that it's truly not not of this world. And before my mission, I really didn't have that strong of a relationship with my Heavenly Father. Um, and on my mission, that has become very real. And I'm so grateful that I've had this time to share this message with my brothers and sisters. I love Anaheim, California, and I love um, the people I've served. I know that as we continue to um, follow in our Savior's steps, that we'll be able to become like Him, and that we'll be able to help others around us. The thing about a mission is you're never ready to come. I'll never forget the, the feelings I've had as I've been able to, to be an instrument in His hands and have the words come out of my mouth and just know that that's not what I'm saying, but it's what He's, he's using. And it's so real. And I love the Savior. And I know this work is, is true. I just want to tell you what a privilege it has been to serve a mission for the Lord. Each one of you knows this. And, and I want you to know that I also feel that it has been a great privilege to serve the Lord. But it has been a greater privilege for me to meet such fine young men and young women. I appreciate you and I love each one of you. I know that God lives and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that I have a very strong testimony of the divine role of Jesus Christ in our lives and I know that he lives and I've had that witness to me in special ways throughout my life. I express my love and thanks and appreciation to all of you for all that you mean to me and all that you mean to our Heavenly Father and pray that his blessings might attend you in all your facets of your life and I say this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Just